Okay, welcome to our webinar today. Uh, my name is Lance Parker with Excel Solutions. Um, today's webinar will be on Incentive Comp, the Oracle solution. Um, how centralizing your business data drives better performance. Uh, rules of engagement for this webinar will be as follows. Questions will be filled at the end of the webinar, and you can type those questions in at any time in the chat window or chat box. Um, there's an example here on this screen. Um, we may not be able to get to all the questions, so if we don't get to your questions, please email us or contact us after the webinar. Uh, the last slide should contain our contact information. And I'll turn the time over to Greg Thompson now. All right. Thank you, Lance. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Just a brief overview of what we're trying to accomplish today. The program agenda, we're going to talk a little bit about Excel as Solution. We're going to follow that up with a little bit about Batesville Casket. Chris Charlton will get into that more during his presentation. A little overview of Oracle Incentive Converse Compensation followed by a product demonstration. The product demonstration will be pro provided by Christian Eric, who is our VP of Sales and Marketing here at Excel Solutions. Following that product demonstration, we're going to look at the use case review of what we presented. And Chris Charles is kind enough to join us. Chris is the Business Integration Manager for Batesville Casket Company. So through all that, the objective of today is really just to provide you a real-life view how Oracle Incentive Compensation can impact your business on a day-to-day -day basis. A little bit about Excel as Solutions. Excel as Solutions is an Oracle Gold CX partner. Excel as Focus is solely on Oracle CX products. That's their customer relationship, customer experience product package. Um, we focus on Salesforce automation, sales performance management, which is a broader stroke, which includes Oracle incentive compensation, business process reengineering, knowledge management, and marketing automation. We're one of the original CX partners, and we specialize in Oracle Sales Cloud, Oracle Incentive Compensation, Marketing Cloud, and Service Cloud. We've implemented numerous clients around the country in varying business backgrounds and verticals and um, have a very good uh, reputation around the country. A little bit about Batesville Casket. Batesville Casket Company is a $600 million subsidiary of Hildebrand Incorporated. They've been around for a, over 100 years in, in the death care industry in North America. You think about that, having a history of 100 years, that's a long time for habits to develop. When you look at implementing an application to change salesperson's habit, they have to be very impactful for the sales rep in order for that to occur. So that's a big point to remember here, that they were battling 100 years of history in order to, to make this change. They manufacture and sell funeral service products, burial caskets, cremation ca caskets, and personalization and memorization products. Why did they do it? They had one company goal, to maintain their leadership in the market. Business challenges that they faced, there's a declining market and they had strong competition and new people entering that market. They wanted to provide a real-time insight and efficiency so that their sales organization um, could continue selling with their customers and drive overall growth. How did they do that? They developed a, a team they call their SMART team. It's the Sales and Marketing Analytic Resource Toolkit Initiative. They launched that on October 2012. They first delivered a mobile app in January of 2013 followed by the web user interface in April of 13. Why did they do that? What, what were their goals? To be simple, to provide alignment, and to be fast. So that was their goal, and that's what they were still continually today working on improving on. They service 150 field sales reps from all levels along their sales force. A little bit about Oracle incentive compensation. What is it? It's a global compensation application that automates the design, administration, and analysis of an incentive-based compensation program. It's one place to gather your transactional data to pull in to not only pay your salespeople, 
but to provide insight and empower them to not only sell more based on that compensation, but also to limit the interaction between finance and sales whenever a discrepancy comes up. In today's presentation, we're going to focus on integrating and centralizing your ERP data. And when I say ERP data, that doesn't necessarily have to be a traditional ERP system. We've actually integrated out of Excel spreadsheets that people are capturing transactional data on. We're going to focus on incenting your sales team to increase their performance by giving them near real-time insight into um, their earning and projections. This is a great way to not only um, drive user adoption, but to, to increase collaboration between the back end and the front end of the house. And then we're going to talk about managing by exception. Let's look at how this tool can provide insight to the management team to focus on the people that need the most help by seeing how they're doing against their quota and focusing their efforts where it can make, make the most impact on their overall team. With that, we're going to jump right into the jump application. Right. And Christian is going to uh, present that for us. Thank you, Greg. Uh, this is Christian Eric. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing here. Um, hopefully everyone can hear me. Um, I am going to kind of walk you through uh, a particular setup we did, and, and, and we've kind of just uh, – Taking a, a few a few uh, dummy transactions and things like that, I was just going to kind of go through this real quick. What I wanted to do before we talk through this, to the point that Greg talked about with uh, automating, you know, your your business, centralizing your data, and automating the process. You know, this is a standard uh, view, if you will, of of all the clients we've implemented. Almost all of them will have data in some source system, data that is pertinent to what a sales rep sold. So when a sales rep uh, books a deal, uh, ultimately that will end up, end up in the ordering system, whether it's an Oracle you know, uh, ERP system like J.D. Edwards or eBusiness Suites, or even if it's a CRM system, so it's closed one opportunities, or it's from a third-party system or even like a spreadsheet that Greg said, uh, we always automate that process so that that data can flow into the incentive comp system as frequently as any particular client would need it. And we have some clients flowing that data in hourly, for example. So, and, and the purpose of that, of course, is to centralize that information so reps can, in, in real time or near real time normally, uh, they can check and see, hey, I just booked this deal. Um, how much am I being paid on it? You know, and, and based on their, their schedule of payment, um, did I bump up to the next tier? You know, did, I, did I hit my number? And how, what is, what am, where am I against my plan? All of those questions can be answered very quickly because we are paying very close attention to the data and we're focused on getting that data from those source systems into the incentive compensation tool. So what, the way we work this normally is we, we bring in the data, we process the, them as what's called transactions, then we push them through the plan to calculate their incentive earnings, and then uh, we pay them uh, the, we, we generate the payments and push that payment data out to either a third-party payroll or, or accounts payable system. Some of our clients actually have independent uh, reps, and independent, they're not, they're contractors, they're not necessarily employees, so it wouldn't go to the payroll, go to accounts payable. And of course, ultimately, the rep gets their money, they're happy, and they are motivated to sell more. And Chris, you, you're going to uh, talk a lot more about that. Okay, so let me jump out of this um, real quick and uh, to uh, my examples I've got here. So right here, basically, what you're seeing is the incentive comp uh, an example of an incentive compensation transaction. And in this example, this particular uh, example is a real estate example. So uh, this person, uh, Mike, has sold a million dollar deal, and uh, his margin percent is, uh, you know, it's nor under normal real estate deals, it would be 5% of that million dollars. And the way you can see it under, under the bottom here is the earnings are calculated uh, based on not just this margin percentage, but also based on a rate table rate. Now, the earnings you'll see here are, are just um, actually examples, and we were testing it and putting in a big number. So it's actually 75% and then 60% uh, of that 75%. You'll see what I mean right here. 
So um, before I get to that, though, uh, flipping back kind of to, to this, this slide, so we process the transactions, and then we calculate uh, the earnings through, by calculating through the plan. Okay, so here's an example of the plan. And in the system, you can manage uh, multiple plans in the system across multiple different um, compensation schemes that you might have for different reps selling different products, different business units, and, and so on and so forth. Um, what will happen is um, you set up the plan, and then the plan has multiple components and performance measures. Now, this particular plan has only two components, so I'll show you kind of the example of that. Underneath the component, you've got the performance measures. Um, in here, we have, in this performance measure, we've got about, I think we have eight total in this example. But a performance measure, and this is kind of one of the things that is, in my opinion, very cool about this application. You can get to this level of granularity with it. You can have multiple performance measures to measure performance against a specific sales goal, a specific type of product you want them to excel, accelerate on or to sell more of. Maybe you're launching a new product and you set up you know, a performance measure against that. There are various reasons why you have multiple performance measures. In this example, we're actually calculating multiple performance measures in order to come up with the correct uh, number and, and show that a person goes from one tier to the next. And let me show you the tiers. Within the performance measures, you set up um, the credit categories. So based on the different performance measures, you can, you can sell, uh, you know, these, these, these guys can sell commercial, they can sell residential properties and foreclosures, um, and so on and so forth. Um, and then you can, the system is, in, a, in essence, like a very powerful Excel tool where you can put the formulas in there, you can, in this expression builder, and you can see, you know, what they're, what they're multiplying the earnings, or the, the actually not, not earnings amount, but the, the amount of the, of the transaction times a certain rate table, which would equal then that earnings amount. And here's the example of the rate table. In the rate table, you'll see that when this rep, or when any rep on this particular plan earns up to $50,000, uh, from zero to 50, they are earning 60% of that. Uh, when they go from 50,000 to 100,000, they're, they're earning 65%, and then above, above 100,000, they're earning 70. Now, I know um, I worked with Chris Charlton at Batesville to set up their rate table rates, and they had uh, probably 20 or so rows in the rate table. So this is just a very simple example of, of three different rates. Um, and then, of course, the expression builder is sort of the, the piece that is like Excel is, is right, built right into this. And you can see the measure result times the rate table rate will actually give them the actual amount that they're going to be paid. Um, and here is actually an example of, and, and if I jump back to my slide, you'll see in the third step right here uh, where we do our payment processing within the system, this is an example of a pay sheet for somebody named Mike. And Mike is... Uh, has two separate plans that he earns um, trend, or commission on. And, and by the way, you can set up plans to, for, for, bonus, for a bonus structure, which is uh, more similar to the way Batesville has done theirs. Uh, this particular example is a commission structure, and it's just a very straightforward commission. Uh, when you generate the pay sheet, you actually are going to collect all of the earnings that they have earned for across all the transactions that have come through for that period. So this pay sheet was for May of 2015, and there were two transactions, two real estate transactions of a total of $8,865. Um, the other nice thing you can do with this is you can actually um, you can make manual adjustments in here. And just to highlight this, this person, for whatever reason, Mike, uh, they needed to take out $195. Maybe there were some expenses and fees involved with those real estate transactions. You can put that right into here to get the exact amount you want to pay. So you know that in your accounting system, you know that you're only paying him $8,670, not $8,865. You can also put positive amounts and, and increase that number as necessary. Um, Okay, so that is, that is kind of all I wanted to show on the product. But one of the points I do want to make, though, is that when you are uh, looking at, I'll go back to my slide here, when you are looking at the, the system as a whole, the way that we have designed it and, and the way that Oracle has designed it, I should say, is, is enables you to collect all your 
sales data into one place, uh, process that data so you can determine the earnings for each individual that, er, that sold, that it, uh, sold that, those products and services, and then spit out payment amounts to uh, you know, your ERP system or payroll system or whatever, and, and then pay your reps. Now, the exciting thing is that can be going on constantly, even though maybe they're only being paid once a month or twice a month or every second week, every day the rep can get in the system and see, and, and knowing that they were just on site at a client the day before and they booked a deal for, you know, 5000 50000 a, a million dollars, they can get in the system and see, oh, hey, I know that I'm being paid this much and look in there and, and realize, oh, my gosh, I hit my next, I bumped up to my next tier from 60 to 65. Now, if I work really hard before the end of the year, I can get to 70 and earn a nice little extra bonus or amount that will, um, that I can use for, you know, purchasing holiday gifts or whatever. So anyway, I, I kind of uh, wanted just to give you all a brief overview of the system. And as we mentioned earlier, you know, if, we, if you wanted a full demonstration and, and all of that, obviously let's, let's connect later on and we can uh, provide you a more live, active demonstration of the tool. I just wanted to give you guys some screenshots. So with that, why don't we jump into uh, Chris Charlton, and we're excited to have Chris. Uh, Chris and I have known each other now for uh, uh, almost a couple of years now, Chris, I believe, and uh, he, uh, he and I worked very hard on setting up the, the incentive comp system last year. So it's been, uh, what has it been now, Chris, about 14, 15 months since you guys have set this up? And, yes. um, and uh, so we're very excited and very uh, very glad and appreciative of Chris's presence on our webinar here today. And so I'm going to go ahead and turn the time over to him and uh, blow this up and uh, let him kind of talk through what have been some of the results since they, they put an incentive comp into place. So go ahead, Chris. Thank you, Christian. As Greg mentioned earlier, you know, we have a long history and some you know, ways that we've done things for very long. And over the years, our struggle has always been as reps got into a routine and struggled to figure out where they could go and how they were getting paid. Our biggest complaints we ever heard from our reps was, I don't know how I get paid. And so if I, I don't know if I need to sell an extra $5,000 to get to the next level or I need to sell another $10,000. I just had to wait. Our old system only updated once a week. It only told them how they were running against their, their quota, but it didn't tell them what they were going to actually earn. So our reps really struggled with that. And then as we implemented the CRM system, the Oracle Sales Cloud CRM, and we were asking them to do opportunities and track their interactions. They could not connect easily what, how the opportunities helped them grow their business and how it ultimately got them paid more. And when we introduced the incentive comp, that drove it. So you want to go to the next page, Christian? So really how we broke it down is our, we had to put it in front of the rep on what they could earn. Most companies think, all right, we've got to drive based on what the company's goals are. But ultimately, when you get down to a sales rep, majority of them, really, the thing that cares most to them is how much is going into their bank account, not what's going into the company's bank account, right? So what we first did is using the IC system, we found, um, one, it allowed us to show them every day how their sales were doing. And we could create any type of plan incentive package that we thought would drive our sales, but allow them to see what they were making. So Christian kind of touched on, you know, bonus plans, commission plans, right? We had a dual uh, commission slash bonus plan. So on some of our product lines, they were paying on commissions and others they were paid on, paid on bonus. In addition to that, we had kickers inside of our plan in our incentive comp that we were able to finally build inside this system, which we weren't able to do in our past. So the reps were able to say that, hey, if I drive sales through this product line and get it to the, the right level and then turn around and drive my volume through this product line, I will can see a significant increase in my pay. So we were able to keep it from how we did that was through this, what I talked about, the earnings potential. And it was a calculator that we developed using all the data that's automatically being pulled right into incentive comp and letting the reps see every morning what they are paid. I'm sorry, not what they're paid, but what they've sold and what they need to sell. Then, as we walked through coaching, we were able to take their incentive comp and kind of put it in their odds end and say, 
all right, Rev, you're right now running at 96% based on what the calculator, and you're going to make X dollars by the end of this month. But what if you got to 100%? Look at how much more money you could make. And then the rep would kind of sit back and go, oh, wow, and I only need to sell X more dollars? Yes. So how would you go about doing that rep? Get them to start thinking strategically versus just running around and trying to knock on every door and hope that someone buys something that's more than they did before, right? So by introducing rep performance, we were able to show them, you know, where their gaps were, and then it ultimately be able to grow share. Go ahead to turn to the next page, Christian. So as I talked about this earning calculator, it was a real simple calculator. We actually have two, one called the earning calculator and one called the kicker. And what the earning calculator does, is, as you can easily see right here on the screen, they would pick the, the month that they wanted to end by, right? So an example is let's say a rep started out really bad at the beginning of the year. Um, the regional has a way to get them back in the game and say, hey, what if you got to 100%, 100% by March or by April? This is what we need to do. The important thing was they could pick what percentage they wanted to achieve. So it gave our regionals the ability to coach them to say, all right, well, why are you only going for 98%? Why not 99? Why not 100%? And by showing this, as you can see, it also tells them how much revenue they need to sell in order to get, in this example, to 100% by the end of October. It then provides to them, using the IC data, what their average sales per day has been over the last two weeks and what they would be required to sell over the next remaining days in the period. This, again, gives the ability to coach to our reps and say, in this example, right, you only need $1,100 more for the rest of the month. What can we do to get you there? Go ahead to the next slide. And I, you see, Bob, you can see they would also show them what they would earn if they did what they picked. Then we'd give them a trend chart to say, hey, you know, I've noticed in this case of this rep, he was performing very well in this example. So he's been, he started the year off actually at 114. He's now down to 109, still very well, but he's kind of trending on a downward pace. So there's that conversation again. Hey, you know, you liked that paycheck in October, right? That was 114% payout. Now you're at 109, wouldn't you like to get back, right? It's constantly putting it back into their paycheck and have them thinking, yeah, you know what? I could go see so-and-so. He might be able to get me a couple more caskets or a couple more urns or some type of cremation product, right, and just drive it. Go ahead to the next page. We also provided to them one of the complaints we had with our reps um, prior to going to the incentive comp and, and uh, the CRM system was they, they might have been doing well now, but they didn't know if that meant they were going to hit their plan at the end of the year. So what we developed for them is a thing called Gap to Plan that basically shows them how much their quota was, how many sales they've already received, what their run rate is today, and how much more they will get, and are they going to exceed plan or miss plan. Then we brought in their opportunity and said, if you close these opportunities when you said you will, you should get this additional revenue. Are you above or are you below? And this, again, allowed them to say, hey, where do you need? You're not working your pipeline strong enough to get you to your goal. We also had the health check report. This is more not really IC driven, but this was driven off of the opportunities where we would look back and see what they've been winning and what they had in their future pipeline. Did they have enough in the pipeline? And where the regional would use this in a coaching scenario would be if someone didn't have anything after this month, they would be looking and saying, hey, you wanted to by February get to 100%, but you have nothing teed up yet to get you to that number. You've got to improve by $1,100 per day to get there. So where are you going to go? And that would allow the rep to start thinking, well, you know what? I can go maybe just here or there. Or they might ultimately say, I don't know where to go, which would lead us to the next slide. But ultimately, we gave them KPIs, top revenue type data that told them like, hey, if you're not sure, rep, where you should go, let's look deep more into detail of what accounts are down, what accounts are, are maybe overall flat, but certain product lines are not selling well with them anymore. It allowed them to think of where they could grow their share. 
and ultimately by growing their personal share, it grew the overall company share. And we were very successful this year. By the end of the year, when we were pushing to the, the bottom number, we, the reps were using that calculator every day to say, okay, I need this, this much more. And then if they hit the next percentage, they would go, oh, now I need this. In the past, they would go a week without knowing and be like, well, I think I'm going to hit 99%. And they'd end up at 98%. And then they'd be upset, thought they got screwed over somehow by the company because they couldn't tell. We were hiding information from this way, the calculator especially, told them exactly what they need to sell. And we saw a significant increase of new sales on the last day of the month because the reps were able to open up their IC system that morning and go, I need to sell X number more dollars today. And they were able to just focus on the day and just knock it out. And we had a very successful year with a we had a growth share for the first time in over 15 years. And we, we attribute it to the visibility that we were able to give our reps to be able to stay on top of what they need to do. And the IC was a big player in that. So some of the best practices around the analytics that we talk about, right? Make the analytics part of your sales process. As I talked through this, right, all of our analytics are, are rep facing. You know, how does it help them figure out where they need to go? You know, every company has great sales reps, every company has average sales reps, and every company has not so good sales reps. If you put the right analytics, the right incentives in front of them, it will help all three groups do a better job. And it also helps you identify those that you might need to coach up or need to coach out, as we would say. We also spoon-fed our analytics, our sales force. When we implemented back in 2012 the CRM system, we went through the crawl. We took the approach of crawl, walk, run. We didn't want to hit them with so many new tools, so many new features where they were overwhelmed. Right? Our reps were still used to at that point, in the most part, paper and pencil, and just saying, this is what I'm going to do. And if we would have thrown the IC, the CRM, opportunities, um, lead management, all that all in front at them, all at one time, our reps would have been overloaded and would have been lost. Another thing that we've learned over time is time your major changes during the off months. Change can be frustrating with your sales force. We have a very mature sales force that have been in their territories for a long time. And when you're making changes to change what they've been doing for 15, 20, 25 years, they get frustrated, and the most important you want them to do is spend time in front of the customer, not sit at home irritated because they can't figure out how to log something or don't know where they're performing. So we always try to make sure that they were off months from when there was a major upgrade from Oracle. And then understand your audience. What might work for your management might not work for the reps. Right? There are some um, KPIs management wants to see that when you get to the rep level, it doesn't make sense to them. They don't understand how they cannot connect the dots in their territory, how it works. And if you give them information overload, again, they just kind of shut down and they'll say, well, I'm just going to do how I've always done it before because this stuff doesn't make sense to me and you won't drive success. Okay. That's kind of the overall how Batesville kind of went with IC and, and how it helped us. Get to the end game. Back to you, Christian. Excellent. Thank you, Chris. Um, really appreciate that. Um, I would say, too, that in my experience, crawl, walk, run is always, always the best approach, for sure. Um, so at this point, uh, I'm going to turn the time back over to our moderator, Lance Parker. Uh, Lance, I guess, are we, do we have any questions? Uh, we have a few questions. First of all, I'd like to thank Chris for his time today and thank everyone who attended. We had a great turnout. Um, and remind you, if you have any questions or any more questions, <coughs> put one of those in the chat box and we'll get those. Um, first question we have, it looks like it might be aimed towards Chris and us as well. How long was your IC implementation? So for us, our IC, we did kind of a two thing. We actually, when we engaged with Acellus, we did quota management, and then we went to IC. 
it was in total about a four month process, but the IC part really was about a month and a half. And part of that implementation was, was actually we got to a certain point and then we decided to change how we were going to pay our reps that year. So we actually had to kind of do rework, but we were able to still meet all of our deadlines because of the easiness of the system. And Incentive Comp is one that's really easy to implement, especially if you have a good partner. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, I was going to say um, it was definitely the latter half of the project with you, Chris, that we, that we you know, worked most on the incentive comp side. Um, I would say, though, initially in the project, what we did is we, we thought of the data. So if I go back to my you know, data slide I had up earlier, um, this one, um, you guys, Chris, you guys used J.D. Edwards internally, right? And so yeah. when we decided to um, – put it all together, we did the data first. So that part was pretty much a done deal, and we, were already, we already had data flowing into the system uh, in order to test with. So, I mean, under normal circumstances, if we're just doing incentive comp and none of the other pieces, we would have tacked on maybe two to four more weeks for managing, you know, getting through the, the part where you have to bring in the data, uh, and you want to integrate that, and you want to test that integration. Um, so, so since we had already done that, you know, Chris, yeah, you're right. I mean, it took us, uh, it took us a month and a half just to set up the plan, test them, and then, you know, go through the changes that kind of came in at the last minute. Um, and that, that was very, a very interesting time. <laughs> yeah, you're correct, right? It was probably, you guys did have to bring in new data for us for around our incentive comp. So I, I would say, yeah, right. it took you guys about two weeks to do that part after specking it out and, and actually building the, the load. Right. But once, once I had the data, it was no more... If I didn't have to do the rework, it was, it was probably about a month for me. Yeah, definitely. Good question. Next question, I guess. Okay, next question. Uh, how easy is it to fix slash change an existing plan? Um, it's actually pretty easy. Uh, I was actually surprised. I thought, you know, once you build the thing, you'd be like, oh, my God. So she's like I said, we had rework. And... Um, it's, you can test, you can play with it, and in the middle of a month, you can change your plan, rerun previous data to the new plan, or you don't have to. You could have it run for a portion of the old or the new. I, I find the tool is, is very user-friendly. I mean, you've got to think through how you want your pieces to work, but once you figure out how you want them to work, changing and updating plans is not hard. This year, it took me about a week and a half to do our plan with the changes we had this year. So it's not it's not difficult. Cool. Okay, great. Good. Yeah, I, I would concur, Lance. Um, I was going to just add that when you when you change your plans and you know you have different things you need to add to it, the nice thing is is uh, you can you can test those extensively. And in my opinion, Chris, probably you'd agree is the testing is what always takes the most time. Um, you know, yeah. to actually change the plan. Now that's just a few hours of time to you know, get through it. And, and a transaction or two through it, but deciding what you want to do with it, that's always in the testing, and that's always what takes more time, right? Yep, yep. Okay, another question. How do you get data into incentive comp? Um, import, web services, you know, how how that happen? Christian? Yes, yeah, and I'll, I'll take that one. So. So, and then Chris, you know, add anything, but, um, you know, this example where I put this, this text right here, automated through integration, um, this is through web services. So, the, there are many APIs built into, into the Incentive Comp system, the Oracle's Incentive Comp system. So, you can add data from multiple sources into the system. Uh, we normally do it through uh, web services, which simply means that uh, our developers will write a simple set of uh, Java code that would sit on a server and grab the data from the, you know, in your case, Chris, a J.D. Edwards, and pull it into Incentive Comp. Um, but it is also possible to import the information, um, import the transactions, that is, into Incentive Comp as well. Other thoughts, Chris? Um, no, I, th I think basic code. I mean, you, your import, it's really up how do you do it. I mean, I've heard of customers that pull it right from, you know, an Excel-based file, obviously, you know, in there you can do it from a file import, you can do it from the web services, you can do it, um, you know, through the new Oracle 
ICS system, you know. So there's a lot of a lot of ways they, they take a lot of different formats, accept it. It's a it's a pretty flexible system and where the data is coming from, and and how to pull it in. It's it, it works pretty pretty cleanly. Okay, I think we have time for one more question. Um, this is the user adoption. Let's see, user adoption numbers for Incentive Comp. Does Base still use any other aspects of Incentive Comp among the reps, territory management, etc.? I'm not quite sure I understand the question on that one. So through our territory, man we use the territory management inside Sales Cloud. Um, we actually use that to do the quota setting. Um, and then we import from the quota setting the, the territory management inside Cloud right into Incentive Comp. It's a, they have a pretty clean um, system that you can export from the quota management right into the, and import it right into IC. So you don't have to do the double the work. You don't have to do the double the work. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall we're managing the territories through incentive comp slash other analytical reports. And where Christian mentioned that we we were already bringing in data in, that's where some of those other reports would be driven. But you can use the incentive comp. We just already had source coming in prior to that. So yeah. I think I, yeah. I hope I answered the question. Yeah, Christian, you yeah. have anything uh, to add to that? No, no. I mean, uh, we we uh, work through all of those processes uh, in order to make sure that that was bulletproof. Um, obviously, a key component inside of Incentive Comp, based on what Chris showed, was the ability to show a rep um, the gaps to plan. For example, so here's how much I have actually earned, um, actual revenue booked, and how much my portion of that is, and here's how much I have remaining. So what what is that? What instead of comp called goal data is essentially the quota data, um, you know, in the sales cloud system has that built into the territory management piece. You can bring that data into incentive comp to um, allow reps to see what their where their get where their gaps are. Okay, I said no, I wasn't going to answer more, but I did. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. So lastly, there's one last one. Who is your implement implementation partner? This is to Chris, I assume. Well, our implementation partner for um, IC quota management was Acellus. They also assisted us in our initial. We we started way back on version 4.0, um, and our I won't say who that was, but we had some struggles with our initial person. But then uh, how we partnered with them is Acellus. We found them, we and they helped us fix what our problems were, and we've been a partner with them um, since that time. Uh, but uh, on any of our implementations, we've been using Acellus. And we've been very happy with that. That, that was a little loaded, wasn't it, Chris? Thank you for that. <laughs> okay. All right. Back to you, Lance. All right. I'd like to thank everybody for attending today and uh, look forward to our next month's webinar. We'll be posted up shortly. Thank you, everyone, and goodbye.